Well, guess I'm doing this once again, hello viewers and welcome to Flight School, a not so one shot series where I show you how to play Flying Circus, GM especially are very welcome to watch this too. First thing first, I did make a prior video on this focused on the very simple basic of dogfighting, then I realized I might be going into this in the wrong way, PBTA is a narrative based system, and Flying Circus is a PBTA RPG that's very unique in how it works, so a lot of people might not fully understand it, which is why I made this video to clear things up a bit, so bear in mind, this video is less about the mechanics like the various moves, and more about the feels of the games and how to improve that experience. Many of you are probably used to positional focused TTRPG like Lancer or whatever where your location on the map matters a lot, but, I want you to just throw that out of the window and expand your mind, because the first thing you need to know about dogfighting is that, things that matter now might not in the next moment. Everything moves in the sky, a lot, up, down, left, right, yawing, turning, twisting, and there might not be a big enough landmark or flying whale for you to know where you are, one second your enemy is right in front of your crosshair, and another, they aren't anymore. Trying to pinpoint the location of everything in a three-dimensional space is very mind-twisting for a human brain, so the second thing you need to know is, pilots are like babies, they don't have object permanence, so don't try to track the position of everything all the time, instead, the only thing that matters is your altitude, your speed, and what is in your perspective, which usually means what is in front of you. If there's an enemy, shoot it, if there's nothing, find something, if there's an ally, line up with them in a formation and fly with them, if you want to find or see something more than just what is in front of you, I recommend the eyeball move, which is a move specifically for looking at stuff and how good your role is could make your situation better. In fact, you should use eyeball moves like every time your turn comes up, not only does it give you a benefit even if you roll badly, which means players are incentivized to use this move more often, it also makes the GM roll easier because they just throw stuff at you instead of trying to track everything too and go insane in the process. Honestly, anytime you even just think of the word look, you should just go for eyeball, humans don't instinctively look up for a reason, we just don't, and tracking everything all the time won't add anything to the system, so just assume anything the pilots aren't watching disappear off into the cloud like an electron that can reappear somewhere entirely. Now that you have learned these two important things to know for flying circus, here's one very basic scenario. A bunch of players, meeting a bunch of enemies, and having a dogfight, here's where a lot of new GM makes a mistake, because they treat this as one big air brawl, instead of multiple smaller dogfights. In many ground combat games, it's easy to track where your teammates are and where the enemies are, so they can fight together in one big fight, supporting each other and so on, not so in the air. Here's the flight pattern of a plane in dogfight, good luck tracking that out, it's hard to figure out where everyone is when you are in a dogfight too, heck, look at some dogfight movies, every time someone is in a dogfight, at that very moment, it will feel like that the only thing that exists is you and your target. Even in a massive air brawl, individuals will end up fighting with individuals, so the best way for GM to handle this, is by splitting up the fight so for each player, only them and their targets exist, and the position of others doesn't matter until a very bad roll happens. I'm sure you know exactly what I mean if you play Ward Hunter enough, sometimes your allies are your worst enemies. This is further reflected in the TTRPG by the fact that communication is difficult, especially with radio being so heavy, so when you are in a dogfight, you most likely are isolated until you finish it up, as you can't call for help, and you can't communicate with any of your teammates at all unless you are in yelling distance or know exactly where each other are, unless you are bullshit with magic. When the players finish up their fight or get away from one, then they can have a moment to even start thinking of joining up with others to fight against their enemies, like using the overwatch move, or doing energy fighter stuff. Sometimes, you get scenarios like two players fighting against an ace, or one player having to fight multiple planes at once, but for small fights like these, it's still easy to track, and collisions start to become a very real risk. So, basically, my point of the whole video is, don't track literally everything, because you will go insane, and everything will always be in a constant state of change anyway, so the only thing you as a pilot will really know at all time, mostly, is what your altitude meter and speedometer are saying, though they can be inaccurate sometimes, and what's in front of you, your face, not your plane, you can definitely look back and realize you are getting shot at with enemies behind you. And for GM, if you do track something at least, I suggest just track altitude together on a board or a lengthy piece of paper, no position, or bearing, 
that way lies madness. Of course, sometimes that doesn't quite apply, like in Canyon Run, where obviously you know there's only two positions a plane could be around you, in front or behind, but you don't know how the canyon is shaped like, there could even be a split off path where you and your fellow players can split up and deal with enemies individually. Or there is something big and slow enough that it works as a landmark, like an airship, or flying fortress, or whatever, in which case you can use that to know where you are. Also, one more thing, this one is more specifically to GM, it's about hard moves, I know some of you are sadistic, but hard moves don't mean an enemy plane appear out of nowhere and shoot your players to bits all the fucking time, don't just keep doing that, there's a massive variety of hard moves you can pull from the book, like for example, your player has been pushing their plane for a while, force them to make a cool down move or fuel check move, they have a rather close encounter with someone, make them spin out from the wind and force them to recover. Or heck, think of all the troubles early airplanes have, like inaccurate altitude or speedometers, oil or fluid spraying into the cockpit, things in the plane suddenly sound weirdly and wrong, weather conditions can also be bad too, like thick cloud that obscure stuff, or goddamn lightning storm, there's even more hard moves to throw from bad weather in horror of the heights expansion. You could even just affect the pilot themselves, like them being so dizzy and stressed out that they have no idea where anyone is. This way, you still hurt your players when they pull a hard move, but not make it so terrible that they are afraid of every goddamn roll, then when they really fucked up, you can pull in the hard hard move like collision and make them roll to evade. It's not just with hard move too, air battles are confusing, dizzy, and disorienting to the human mind, so sometimes, we get things wrong, or didn't notice something coming or leaving. As GM, you can introduce new threats like Grand Raptors looking to eat, let the player realize the enemy is disguising their real number, both higher or lower, or even misidentifying something entirely, make things exciting and thrilling, but not just with bullets, add in some drama and danger, and that's the key to a great campaign in Flying Circus. And that's it for what I got for this episode, not everything I have said might work all the time, but it is something you should keep in mind when role playing or game mastering Flying Circus, most importantly, make sure everyone have fun, including the game master. Anyway, that's all for now, and I hope you guys could now fully enjoy the art of flying and dogfighting with this wonderful book, I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.